January 11, 1978, Chuck Knox is named head coach of the Buffalo Bills. The reaction most of the players had was uh, they didn't believe it because I called a lot of the guys when I found out about it. Like I called Willie Parker, the guy who plays next to me, and he just didn't believe it. He thought I was kidding or you know playing a practical joke on him. I think all the players felt this way. We were really excited when he came because actually we found out we got the best coach in football, or one of the very best. His record indicates that. Knox's arrival in the Queen City brings with it great expectations. He is a proven winner, ready to restore Buffalo to the mainstream of professional football. Well, I'll tell you this, I'm happy about the move to Buffalo. I'm excited, I'm enthusiastic, I can't wait to, to get to work. Uh, I'm here to, tonight uh, to begin uh, that type of work. And, and we're originally from Pennsylvania, we've been in the East, everybody's telling me about the snow, about this, about that, but listen, we're here to roll up our sleeves and go to work and get the job done. And I know Buffalo's a good community, a lot of good people here. And uh, that's what it's all about. And I've got to go to Tampa on Saturday to coach the NFC team <laughs> in, in the Pro Bowl game. And it's probably the first time in the history of the Pro Bowl game that we're going to have two AFC coaches. Well, because I'm now coaching the Buffalo <laughs> Bills, the AFC. Ted March Broda from Baltimore is going to be the other coach. So one thing for sure, uh, an AFC team is going to win. In his first coaching assignment of 1978, Knox guided the National Conference team to his third victory in four Pro Bowl tours. Trailing by two touchdowns at the half, the NFC stormed back for a 14-13 triumph. Knox's National Conference career ended successfully the way it began. Now he looks to place his stamp on the Buffalo Bills and the American Conference. I've always felt that the Bills have had a lot of talent, and I think Chuck Knox is the guy that can bring it out. Uh, I think he's going to start the adrenaline moving with the Bills, and this is what we need. I think he's very good. I think he did a very good uh, job at uh, Los Angeles. Uh, the Bills need a very good uh, coach to come in and uh, move us up the way. I am sure that as time goes on, we will, as fans, will certainly be very happy with his coaching record, and we are certainly looking towards a winner in the future for the Buffalo Bills. I think I've been one of the Bills' better fans, and I haven't missed a game since the Bills' been here. And as far as the Bills are concerned, I don't think they like to lose any more than I do. And if Chuck Knox can do here what he did in L.A., there will be standing room only. What Chuck Knox accomplished in Los Angeles was an unparalleled five consecutive division championships. His team won 77% of their regular season games and always made the playoffs. He turned the Rams into a winner overnight, going 12 and two in his rookie year, a resurgence that made Knox NFL Coach of the Year in 1973. For all his success, Knox remains low key. He takes pride in his reputation as a player's coach. As far as our philosophy is concerned, either offensively or defensively, the bottom line is to win. And we want to do whatever we have to do to win. Disappointment has dogged the Bills for two years. It was no different in 1977. Victory was elusive as Buffalo reluctantly rode a merry-go-round of losses. In seasons of frustration, moments of elation are the most remembered. Moments like game five, when Buffalo beat the league's best defense at its own game. The Atlanta Falcons established an NFL record for surrendering the fewest points in modern history. On an October Sunday in Orchard Park, the Bills did them one better. 
Buffalo made a lone field goal stand up for an emotional victory. In the Jets game at Shea Stadium, the Bills were again poised on the precipice of defeat. Number 81, Bob Chandler, pulled them back with a touchdown in the final seconds. Buffalo's most significant Sunday of 1977 came in hostile surroundings before a New England sellout, comfortable with the home team's chances against a struggling Eastern Division rival. But uneasiness set in early when running back Roland Hooks, number 25, found broad boulevards through the Patriot defense. The Bills' versatile attack collected nearly 400 yards, then turned matters over to a defense that was equal to the task. Buffalo closed down New England's vaunted ground game, then left no lanes open through the air. Number 24, Doug Jones, made an alert return of a Steve Grogan interception to seal the issue. It was the most stunning upset of the NFL year. A sunny respite in a season of storms. Special teams are the landing parties of professional football. They establish the beachheads, absorb the poundings. In Buffalo, their names are Cornell, Freeman, Frankoyak, and Adams. Typical of the Buffalo specialists is Keith Moody, number 46, part-time cornerback and full-time hustler. His block for teammate John Kimbrough translates into six points on this play against Baltimore. Moody is by no means one-dimensional. He set six club records as a runback artist, including the longest punt return in Buffalo history, this 91-yard eyeful against Cleveland. Winning football takes many elements, special teams and defense, a high priority item for the Bills' new coach. I think that to win consistently in the National Football League, you have to have good defense. I think that everything that you do begins with your defensive football team. And uh, this was true where we were before. It's going to be true in Buffalo. So we have to give a top priority to establishing and maintaining a good defensive football team. It begins in the combat zone, the defensive line. Here there is a winner and a loser on every down. Top draft choice Phil Dokes, number 85, learned as a rookie last year. He must apply these lessons in a larger role this fall. And Sherman White, number 83, and tackle Bill Dunstan, number 76, each made their share of important plays. Number 77, Ben Williams, was everywhere, making a general nuisance of himself and keeping up the defensive pressure. The Bills chose tackle Mike Kadish, number 71, as their most valuable player. And to hear Chuck Knox tell it, it's not hard to figure why. The real thing that makes Mike Kadish an outstanding defensive lineman is the fact that he goes all out on every play, that he hustles, he pursues, he gives his body up play after play after play. Pressed into service when John Scorpan was hurt, number 52 middle linebacker Merv Croker filled the gaps with an authority born of five pro seasons. Outside linebacker Dan Jillick was a stabilizing influence in only his second year as a regular. When Jillick arrived at the point of impact, ball and ball carrier often parted company.
Rookie free agent Shane Nelson, number 59, emerged as a surprise leader of the Bills' defense. Nelson made the most of his opportunity and led the club in tackles. Strong safety requires the strength to defend on running plays and the agility to cover receivers. Doug Jones showed the best of both in a demanding defensive role. Number 28, cornerback Dwight Harrison, provided strong run support and made several key interceptions. Mario Clark, number 29, was tenacious at the defensive corner. Clark is an example of the confidence experience fosters. Playing with poise under pressure, Clark's seven pass interceptions would have made him the national conference leader. As things turned out, his total wasn't good enough to lead the Bills. That honor went to Tony Green, number 43, who swiped nine opposing passes. Green was the second leading interceptor in the NFL. His outstanding all-around play earned Green a spot on the AFC Pro Bowl team. Knox finds a lot to like about the former Maryland free agent. Tony Green is an outstanding free safety. He's got great range. He's got great anticipation. He reads a quarterback very, very well. That's why he was among the top interceptors in the National Football League last year. Good teams win with defense. For the Bills to fulfill their ambitions, the defense must carry an enlarged load. If you're going to run the football, the National Football League, you have to have an outstanding offensive line. We have two great guards in Joe DeLamalier and Reggie McKenzie. And we have numerous others that, that I think have the capabilities of giving the Buffalo Bills an exciting offense that is going to be productive. The Buffalo offensive line Center Willie Parker in his first full season as a starter. And tackle Dave Foley, a model of courage and consistency. New Buffalo strongman tackle Joe Devlin, one of the emerging talents on a young club. Then there is guard Reggie McKenzie, an athlete of fury and flair. With hair trigger quickness, he can exit the line to convoy a running back outside. McKenzie plays with the intensity of a man who won't be beaten. An offensive line coach in 10 years as a pro assistant, Knox has a special affinity for these often unknown Sentinels. One lineman who has received much deserved attention is three-time All-Pro guard Joe DeLamalier. Knox isn't reluctant in describing DeLamalier's importance to the Bills' attack. I think Joe DeLamalier gives an added dimension by his presence to a football team because he has such outstanding character. He's totally dedicated. He wants to win. He is a winner. And it's this kind of football player that we're going to build the Buffalo Bills around. Nineteen seventy seven was a bittersweet year for O.J. Simpson. There was an historical moment in the Atlanta game when Simpson became only the second player in the annals of the NFL to rush for more than 10,000 yards. There was little else to shout about. Blurred vision in the preseason and knee damage later put him in the hospital 